Brakathayahawa, Brakathayahawa Shai, Brakathayahawa, Brakathayahawa Shai, Brakathayahawa, Brakathayahawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, And blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior. The Thelmash Nakabala is a Kormi Shah Shirala, get double honors to the elders of Israel, being the apostles. And the elders of Great Millstone, that will well. Shalom, Wahab, Labach, Yashar, Shirala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at y'all again with a lesson by Harukha Khorash, Shah Amaf, and the Holy Spirit of Truth. And, um,. I don't, I don't know the specific title of the video just yet, but the topic is going in on how we are uh, spiritual doomsday preppers. All right. We're preparing for the uh, for the day of doom. OK. And uh, the scriptures talk about the day of the, uh, the day of doom. You, you got um, you got a doomsday clock here in America. Right. And it's getting closer and closer to midnight. We're getting closer. I mean, what we're getting closer and closer to the end of this wicked vile society and as we get closer and closer we need to be prepping ourselves we need to be preparing ourselves because the day of doom is the day when Yahweh Shai Mashiach returns okay so we need to be preparing ourselves for his return it says in book as it says in the book of Matthew the 25th chapter it talks about the wise versions and the foolish versions and how the full and how the wise versions made themselves ready the, the wise versions made themselves ready for the return of the bridegroom, okay? But the foolish versions, they didn't have that oil, okay? Which means their lamps went out. And they were unable to enter in to the chambers with the bridegroom. We don't want to be a part of that number. We don't want to be with, in that group with them guys, all right? So we need to be focused on his return. We need to be focused all right, on getting ourselves right every way, shape, or form. There's always something to work on. There's always something to be better at. There's always an area we, where we can improve on. So praying for the uh, strength to overcome any obstacle. Praying for more faith. Praying for healthy fear of Yahweh Barasham Yahweh Shai. Praying for whatever we need, man. It says, cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. The scriptures say, pray without ceasing. Okay? In the book of Luke, it says, shall not the Lord... It's, it, it, uh, it's, it's, he spoke a parable. I'm going to start off with that. I'm going to read some of that. This is Luke chapter 18. And I'll start at verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men are always to pray and not to faint. All right, that prayer is what keep us strong. That prayer is powerful. Okay? Prayer is a big part of, of, of this walk of ours, man. Right? I'm going to jump down. Luke 18 and 7. And shall not Yahweh avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them, which cry or which pray day and night unto him? All right, which prayer is synonymous with beg, begging, begging for mercy, begging for more faith, begging for forgiveness, begging for salvation, right? Begging to be delivered. Verse 8, it says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man come, uh, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. So that's the key ingredient that Yahweh Shai is looking for when he returns is faith. In Hebrews the eleventh chapter it says without faith. Let's just read it, cause it uh go it go with the topic. This is the book of Hebrews chapter eleven and verse six. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We gotta have that faith, and with that faith we must be we must be seeking him diligently. This is how we prepare for, for um, the day of doom. This is how we prepare for the end of the world. All right. By seeking our power, our God, Yahweh, the one true God, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai diligently. That's how we're going to escape the sad perils. Real quick, I want to go back to that Hebrews, but let me read this in Peter first. This is 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 11. 
Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, Lord's about to melt America. America's about to be melted. It says that the day cometh which shall burn like an oven. In the book of Malachi, the fourth chapter, Lord's about to melt this place, man. Uh, where the day passes the chaff. I'm about to waste this place. Uh, in the book of Isaiah, it says that the Lord created the waster to destroy. All right, America's going to be completely and utterly wasted. All right, like uh, brothers that play Grand Theft Auto. Right, your ass die, lose all your life, and it, it uh say wasted, right? Well, that's America. This place about to be wasted, completely and utterly destroyed via intercontinental ballistic missiles and fire from the chariots, so-called UFOs, so-called UAPs. And before the missiles come, all right, the uh, RFID CHRP is gonna be enforced upon the world, okay? And a lot of other different plagues is gonna hit America. Pestilence. All right, more pestilence, more earthquakes, more fire, okay, more chaos, more uproars of the people. Things, things are getting ready to spiral out of control. Things are spiraling out of control. And this is what's going to keep us safe. This is what's going to keep us protected. Faith. And fear in Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai. Might as well go back to this Hebrews. This is Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. By faith, Noah being warned of Yahweh of things not seen as yet, move with fear. So Noah, in his time, the way he escaped doomsday, which is when, the, when it started to rain, the way he escaped that doomsday was what? Moving in faith and moving in fear. Okay? Key word, faith. Key word, fear. Key word, moving. You can't say that you have faith and there's no movement behind that. You can't say that you have fear, but there's no movement behind that. Okay? By Noah's faith and his fear, he was moved to build an ark, all right, that could fit all, 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 all the animals that he put on there. All right? He moved in the fear and his faith. And that's how we ought to be moving. We can't be moving in our flesh. It says that uh, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It's a spiritual battle. So we must what? Sow to the spirit so that we can of the spirit reap life everlasting. Because if we sow to the flesh, shall reap death. Okay? It says... Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7, it says, By faith Noah being warned of Yahweh of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. All right, so off of his faith and his fear and the movement and the action that came with it, Noah was saved and his household was saved. So I don't want Ratazah. Our faith and our fear and the movement that comes with it is pleasing to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai that he shows mercy unto us and unto our household. Back in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought she to be in all holy conversation and godliness? So we have to be living holy, seeing that this world is about to come to an end. Nukes is about to get shot off. Uh, shot off all right. Famine is coming. Pestilence is coming. The martial law troops is coming. The devil is coming down having great wrath. Seeing that all these different things are about to happen. How should we be living? What manner of man are we to be? Our way of life needs to be holy. Our way of life needs to be godly. To be godly means to be godlike. How do we be godlike? By following God's word. By following Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai's word to the best of our ability. How do we how do we live holy by following the Holy Bible? OK, it says verse 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, where in the heavens. So it's, it's describing the day of doom, right? Where in the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and nuclear war. Right. Verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So after this place goes down. 
Yahweh Shai and the elect of Israel got next. It's, it's, the, uh, uh, um, a holy, righteous kingdom is being established in the midst of our enemies. As we speak, the power of heaven is setting up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And this kingdom is being set up or this kingdom is being built by his holy word being broadcasted throughout the four corners of the earth. That's what's bringing this place down. And that's what's building his kingdom up simultaneously. It says, wherefore, beloved, seeing that we look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him. So like, yep, that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. So we have to give diligence to make our calling and election sure so that we can escape the day of doom. All right, let's read that precept. This is 2nd Ezra 7 and 43, but the day of doom, let me start at verse 42. He answered me and said, this present life is not the end where much glory doeth abide. All right, this is the end where much glory. See, at Ezra's time, that wasn't the end. Ezra's time wasn't the end. All right, there's still a, a, a bunch of prophecies that need to be fulfilled. But this life that we're living in right now, this present life here in 2024, this is the end. Where much glory doeth abide. And if we suffer with him, we shall be glorified with him. So let's endure hardness as good soldiers of Mashiach Yahweh Shai. This present life is not the end where much glory doeth abide. Therefore have they prayed for the weak. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. And the beginning of the immortality to come. Okay, this is the day of doom. This place the, uh, is going to be, this place is going out with a bang. It says in the book of Revelations, it says that thus with violence shall Babylon be thrown down. This place is going to be violently destroyed. Okay. Doom. The prophets of doom is right. Okay. The men on the highways and byways proclaiming the destruction of this place. Those men are right. And when this thing come to pass, then you shall know a prophet has been among you. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries of kingdoms of wars, or, 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 against many countries and kingdoms of war, of evil and of pestilence. Okay? So that's what we're proclaiming. We're, pro we're proclaiming doom. It says that the day of the Lord is darkness and not light in the book of Amos. As if a man fled from a lion in a bear meadow. Ran into the house, leaned upon a wall, and a serpent bit him. There's not going to be any dis, uh, uh, any escape for the wicked. The only ones that's going to escape is the elect of, Yahweh, uh, uh, of, of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and his only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah. Those are the only ones that's going to escape the said perils. That's Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, the seventh verse. It says, let's just read it. Second Ezra chapter seven, or Salakia. Second Ezra chapter nine, and verse seven, it says, "And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed." Those works need to be done now. The works of the Spirit, okay, needs to be done now. Working on ourselves is not just putting lessons out; it's applying what's in the lessons. That's a part of the work as well. Applying what we're listening. A uh, 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 living by what we're learning, practicing what we preach. Not just putting a video on YouTube and doing the, uh, the, the opposite. All right. The main part of the work is working on ourselves because each each and every one of us is a part is a stone to the kingdom. Right. So part of building the kingdom is building ourselves up, our, ourselves up. Okay. Growing in grace and in the knowledge of Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Abounding in wisdom. Abounding in the work. We haven't been given this knowledge to be stagnant. We haven't been given this wisdom to be the same nigga says, um, put off the uh uh the old man, the former conversation. To be new creatures. 
right? To be renewed day by day. Every day we have to be getting better. Little by little, inch by inch. Now much more that we see the day approaching. He's coming. Hebrews 10. He that shall come will come and will not tarry. He's coming. He's on his way. I want to be found worthy to stand before him. Let's read that. This is the book of Luke. Or let me finish. No, no. It's Luke. This is Luke chapter 21. In verse 34, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfing. Take heed unto ourselves, man. Okay, that's what examining ourselves. There's a scripture in the book of Psalms 119. It says, I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. We need, we need to examine our ways, examine our thoughts, examine our speech, examine our spirit. Okay, cleaning ourselves up and preparing for the return of the king. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. A snare is going to come upon these people that's not prepping. Even the preppers is going to come upon them as a snare because they, the, the way that they're prepping a carnal prepper, you can't prepare. You can't carnally prepare for what's about to happen a time like no other, which I've never been seen on the earth. Getting bullets is not going to save you from a pestilence. OK, storing up on a bunch of food is not going to save you from martial law troops coming in and dragging your ass out your house. In the book of Proverbs, the 11th chapter, say, Riches profit not. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs 11 and verse 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Righteousness. And what maketh a man righteous? It says, Abraham's faith was counted unto him as righteousness. So we ought to be watering our faith that it may grow. Like that mustard seed. You got to water that mustard seed in order to become, in order for it to become this big, all right, glorious tree. You got to water it. You got to give it a uh, light. The proper nutrients. It's the same with our faith. Neglect not the gift that has been given on to us. The gift of what? The gift of faith, which is what's going to be our salvation. It says in the book of Ephesians, by grace are you saved through faith, which is not of yourselves. It's a gift of the Lord. So we can't neglect our faith. We need to continue to nourish it, continue to water it, continue to give it light, continue to work on ourselves, man. Add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance, so on and so forth. Proverbs 11 and 5, the righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. These people about to be taken in their sins and their wickedness. You don't want to acknowledge Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai? You don't want to acknowledge his word? You don't want to, you don't want to repent? We're going to, you're going to perish? But the ones that's repented, that's repenting, that's in a penitent spirit, that's humble, that's contrite, that trembles at the word of Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. Those will be the ones that are delivered. That's properly preparing for his return. Let's go back to Luke chapter 21 and verse 36. Watch ye therefore, stay on our watch, man. Look what's going on. Though it tarry, wait for it, for it, for it, shall, it shall come and will not tarry. It's happening. It's going down. The time is now. 
So let's stay focused, man. Let's keep our eyes single. Let's keep on working on our arc every day. That tell you, sometimes you got to tell your children go in the other room. Right? You tell your woman, you know, you need to watch them for a little bit, man. I need to read. Whatever your situation may be, man. Just like Noah did. Noah wasn't, you know, playing around with his wife all day. Playing around with Shem, Ham, and Jephet all day. Sure, he had time with them. He taught them certain things. He raised them up. He dealt with his woman. But his main focus was building that ark. So that he can escape the said perils. This is Luke 21 and verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always. That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And to stand before the son of man. All these things that shall come to pass. It's going to happen, man. Best believe that. It's going to happen. And it's going to happen in these days that we living in. I believe that 100%. Too much wickedness is going on in this earth, man. It says in the book of 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter, wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth and the hurtful works are fulfilled. Therefore, the Lord of sudden plagues, scourges, death, bloodshed, all these different things for amendment. Okay, for correction. That's talking about now. Look at, look at the earth. It's polluted by wickedness exceedingly. So those plagues have to come. Okay? And in order to escape these plagues, in the book of 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter, it says, O oh my people, hear my word, make you ready to the battle. And in them days, be even as pilgrims. It's the word that's what's going to allow us to escape. Faith in the word, in the truth of what's written. All right. I'm just looking at, uh, you know, the, the, the screenshot. You know, you got them different pockets, that big backpack. Right. The staff, it says in the book, of, uh, says in the book of uh, Psalms, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Right. All them different pockets. There's precepts in there, man. Precepts that we're going to need on, on this journey of ours. On this straight gate. So rock the second chapter. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Constantly endure such a heart aright and be increased in your latter end. Look at the generations of old. Have ever any trusted in the Lord and was confounded? Has ever any abided in his fear and was forsaken? Who was called upon him and was despised? It never happened. These are the different precepts we need to be equipped with. That we need to be armed with. I think it's 1 Corinthians 10. He is faithful that promised and will not suffer us to be tempted. Above that we are able but will with the temptation. Always make a way of escape. Different precepts that we need to be armed with. That we need to have in our bag. Okay. To utilize when we need. This is, a, this is the most important time. Of our existence right now. I would hate to drop the ball man. It says in the book of Hebrews. Let us fear. Lest a promise. Lest any of us fall short. To the promise being. Let me read it. And then I'm going um, to start wrapping it up because I'm, I'm in my whip. Uh, starting to get dark. Sun going down. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, let us therefore fear. Let's say promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of. Now's not the time to drop the ball, man. Again, this is the most important time of our existence. What happens in this lifetime. It's going, it's going to be attached to us for the rest of eternity. I don't want to we are on we are on the right side of history. 
And all we need to do is hold fast that which we have already until the Lord comes and he that overcometh to keep the Lord's works unto the end. The same shall get power over the nations, even as he has received of his father, of our father, which means what will be joint heirs with him. Hold fast that which we have, which is what? Hold fast to this faith. Hold fast to this knowledge. Wisdom and understanding. It says, uh, continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine. All right. Because the apostles got their doctrine from Yahweh Shai and Yahweh Shai got his doctrine from the Heavenly Father Yahweh. I believe that's what I teach. Okay? I teach the doctrine that the Heavenly Father Yahweh gave to his only begotten son Yahweh Shai and Yahweh Shai gave to the apostles. That's what we teach here at Great Millstone, starting with Apostle Tahar on down. The engrafted word able to save your soul. The servants of the Most High that show the way of salvation. Give heed unto yourself and them that hear thee. For in doing this you shall both save your... Salaki, let me read that. Butchered it. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 13. Till I come give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. All right, so this is what we, so this was, this is uh, Paul writing to Peter, uh, Slaki, this is Paul writing a letter to Timothy, and he's telling him, until I return, till, till we link back up again, give attendance to reading the doctrine of exhortation, but applying it now in a wider sense, all right, until Yahweh Shai returns, this is, this is what we need to be focused on, reading, all right, Doctrine and exhortation, give attendance, meaning give our energy to this, give our energy to this ministry, give our energy to this word, give our energy to Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shah, our creator, where our energy even came from. That's where our spirit came from. So we, we owe him everything that we can give. It says, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by pro pro prophecy, with the laying on of the hand of the presbytery. The presbytery is the body of the elders. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself. And unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this you shall both save yourself. Both save thyself and them that hear thee. So this doctrine that we have. Is able to save us. And, and, and them that take heed to the doctrine. Them that, that, them that submit to the doctrine. To the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So let us, like, like the Hebrews say, let us therefore fear, man. Work out our own salvation with fear and trembling so that we don't fall short, man. Continue to give diligence. This is how we prepare for the end of the world. This is how we prepare for all the chaos that's going to happen. Not storing up, you know, hey, if you can store up water, store up some water, man. Shit. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You can store up some, some little extra little groceries, all right? Do that. But the main protection is in faith in Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai and what's written. That's really the only protection. You can store up that water and, and, and not drink a lick of it. All right. Or the spirit could be on you to store up that water and, and, you know, you sustain yourself for a few weeks and the water run dry. And then what? Goes to the faith. My servant shall eat. My servant shall drink. That's what's going to get us fed. That's what's going to give us drink. That's what's going to give us protection is faith in what's written. The food's going to have to run out in order for him to personally feed us. Right? It's Matthew, the sixth chapter. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things shall be added unto you. So I'm going to read this last precept. Yeah, it's getting a little dark. The book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Salvation is, man, salvation is on the way. The Savior is on the way. Yahweh Shai is returning. The King is coming. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light that's cleaning ourselves up, man. Casting off any any anything that the Lord is displeased with. Taking it, cleaning that out of us. Okay? And putting on the armor of light. 
the armor. That's our protection, right? Which is what? Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach, which Yahweh Shai Mashiach comes in the volume of the book, okay? So put on what's written. Be the precepts. But put ye on the Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We can't be over, we can't be over feeding the flesh, man. So old Gadai um, tells, saying, Proverb, idiom, all right, however you want to say it. But, um, lock it. I'm fucking like, just hold on. <clears throat> but, it, um, pretty much you got two wolves or you got two bears, right? One bear represents the spirit, the other bear. Represents the flesh. Whichever one you feed more. It's going to become stronger. And eat the other. You feed the spirit more. Right. Just like Yahweh Shai said. It said the spirit indeed is willing. The flesh is weak. It says. Pray and watch that you enter not into temptation. So we need to make sure that we're sowing to the spirit. So that we can conquer the flesh. When it matters most. If you feed in the flesh more, it'll eat the spirit. And you'll be thinking carnally. And a carnal mind is enmity with the most high. And, a, and to be carnally minded is death. So having that said, man, that's the that's the that's the lesson. Alright, Lord willing, that was edifying, uplifting, and exhorting. I'm gonna give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, or Chachorash. Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior. Chachorash is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. The Thamashnakabai allows the Chumash Rasharala get up honest to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Shalom Wahab Labachiar Shasharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom Machir and brothers keep on. Push and stay sober, stay diligent, stay faithful, stay prayed up. Salvation draw off nine, redemption is near than we believe. Shalom.